Here at the Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons of England, we've got specimens that are centuries old. It takes a lot of work to keep them in good shape. And thanks to the Elliman Foundation and the Board of Trustees of the Hunterian Collection, we've had a project to try to keep the skills involved alive. This video is part of that, and we hope you find it useful. Here is a good example of a fluid preserved specimen. We'll now look in detail at the component parts of specimen number 3738. Typically, the specimen is mounted in a round or oval glass jar and is suspended on several linen threads to maintain its position. Alcohol, or spirit, was the most commonly used preservative in the 18th century collections, but the conservator should expect to encounter several other preservatives, many of them hazardous. The most commonly encountered sealant in historical collections is a tar-based substance known as pitch. Numerous other sealants may be encountered, and many of these will also be hazardous. Inevitably, deterioration of the preparation will occur, and specimen number P1430 demonstrates some typical problems that require attention. The linen threads have disintegrated and snapped, causing possible damage to the specimen during movement. The fluid is discoloured, and the sealant has dried and cracked, allowing evaporation and leakage. The conservator will carry out a detailed condition assessment, noting the current condition of the preparation and considering any risks that might affect the specimen or staff whilst carrying out any conservation work. An action plan and a health and safety risk assessment can now be put into place to ensure the work is carried out safely. In addition to noting down comments and observations, it is very useful to take a series of digital photographs and make simple sketches if necessary. The removal of a pitch or tar seal should ideally be carried out with fume extraction. It is best to use a sharp scalpel that has been heated in the flame of a Bunsen burner or similar. The aim is to melt the pitch with the heated scalpel in order to soften the seal and to work around the rim of the jar with a cutting motion. Regular reheating of the blade is essential to obtain a good result. The cutting process should never be rushed as this may lead to the glass lid cracking. Due to the possibility of toxic substances being present, fume extraction should be used when identifying an unknown fluid. It is important to determine what the preservative is, so the specimen can be placed into a similar or identical fluid without coming to any harm. A simple alcohol meter is an ideal instrument to use, as it not only determines the presence of alcohol, but also provides a very accurate reading of the concentration. Formaldehyde test kits are available and provide a very accurate colour change in the presence of formaldehyde. It may be advantageous to remove the remaining fluid before removal of the specimen. The specimen can now be removed from the jar. The threads suspending the specimen should be cut with scissors if they are still attached to the jar. The specimen should be handled carefully as it may be very fragile. The specimen can be transferred to a container and a suitable preservative should be carefully introduced. The specimen can be safely stored in this way whilst work is carried out on the jar. 
Some specimens might float and protrude above the fluid level. A piece of absorbent tissue can be used to cover the specimen. It is essential that the storage container has a tight-fitting lid if the specimen is going to be stored for a long period. It is essential to remove all previous sealant, dirt and grease from the rim of the jar and the glass lid to ensure a good seal when the specimen is remounted. A safety razor blade is an ideal tool to scrape away excess pitch. For stubborn areas, the application of a little white spirit will dissolve the pitch. Degreasing and cleaning can be carried out using water and detergent. When using linen thread, it is beneficial to impregnate the thread with molten beeswax to render it waterproof. This minimises any possible leakage when the jar is sealed. The cut lengths of a suitable thickness of thread are immersed in hot wax for up to a minute. As the wax impregnates, air in the thread is expelled. The thread should be removed one at a time and the surface of the thread should be wiped across a block of solid beeswax to remove excess wax and imperfections. Small glass beads or short lengths of nylon monofilament can be used to retain the thread in place. It is beneficial to roughen the shiny and slippery surface of the nylon monofilament by gently rubbing a fine grade wet and dry paper along its length. This prevents slippage of the thread. For larger specimens, the lengths of nylon are preferable as they evenly distribute the weight. The position of the original thread should be identified and the new threads located as closely as possible to the originals, dependent on tissue damage. The old threads can now be removed. A range of specimen and tissue types will commonly be encountered, ranging from extremely fragile and deteriorating to extremely dense and tough. Great care should be taken when handling specimens. A syringe needle of suitable diameter is the preferred method to replace new threads in the tissue. This minimises the damage that might be caused when using surgical or sewing needles. Care should be taken not to damage the wax coating on the linen thread. If this occurs, a new thread should be used. When dealing with fragile specimens, it can be beneficial to place the jar on its side so the specimen can be carefully positioned with the threads hanging loose from the jar. Elastic bands can be used to retain the threads while still allowing movement of the specimen.
The jar can now be filled with preservative fluid. Once the specimen is correctly positioned, sellotape can be temporarily used to secure the threads until the sealant is applied. The preservative fluid can now be topped up. It is essential to leave an airspace to allow for fluid expansion. It's important to ensure that the rim of the jar and lid are dry. White spirit can be applied sparingly to degrease the surface. We use a multi-purpose black silicon rubber sealant that is easy to apply and easy to remove if necessary. First, apply a small amount of sealant to the top of each thread and gently rub it in with your finger. Then apply an even and continuous quantity of the sealant all around the rim of the jar. It is beneficial to leave a small gap to allow trapped air to be eliminated. Apply the lid and gently press down. Clean up excess sealant and allow to stand overnight to cure. In order to simulate a tar-like finish, the application of modelling clay can be advantageous. We favour DAS modelling compound as it's easy to apply and doesn't shrink or crack. Ensure that the ends of the threads are embedded in the clay as you work round the jar. Apply water with your fingers to aid application. Trim any excess clay, being careful not to catch the threads. The application of enamel paint gives an authentic appearance. Two coats are usually necessary as the modelling compound is quite porous. <laughs>